Hey guys, uh, welcome along to Heaton Free Methodist Church Online. It's great to be with you this morning. Hope you are well. Um, I was supposed to get my hair cut before lockdown and it's just gone wild. So apologies for this. I was going to wear a, hair, a hat. Uh, but thought maybe not for church online, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have meant to get your hair cut before lockdown and then we got stuck into another lockdown. But anyway, we've come out of it the other side. Uh, we're still in a tear, but um, we're moving forward and uh, praise God for that. Um, it's great to be together. Um, we've got an exciting service plan for you guys ahead. We are um, looking at continuing our series on being rooted and today we're going to be talking about being rooted in God's love. And uh, Pastor Mark has got a great message lined up for us. Uh, let's just pray before we have a, a, a great time of worship. Lord, I thank you for this time together this morning. I thank you um, that uh, we have the honour to be able to worship and praise you for all that you have done for us. I thank you that today we have woke up. I thank you that we have breath in our lungs. I thank you for the roofs over our head. I thank you for the food in our cupboards. I thank you for all the good things that you give us. I thank you that we are a blessed people, Lord. And I pray that even today, this morning, if we don't feel particularly blessed, maybe we've had a rough few weeks or a rough week this week, God, I pray that we will be able to praise you because of what you did for us. I thank you that you have died on the cross for each and every one of us, and that is something to praise you for, Lord, uh, to for, to thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, God. So I pray that this morning that all the praise and honour will be due to you, God, and that we'll just be able to give it to you. And I pray that um, whatever our situations are, I pray that you will just speak into them uh, this morning, God. I thank you that you have got a word for us, Lord, and uh, I pray that we'll be open to be challenged by it, God, and transformed. So thank you for this time together now, in your name. Amen.
Awesome stuff. Um, time for um, church news. Um, just got a few ones to just remind you of. Uh, last week there was a lot of news, um, but just a couple of things that we just wanted to um, just remind you of. We have got doorstep carols coming up. Uh, hopefully you know what that's about. We're going to be going around um, Hesham and we're going to be playing carols uh, and we're going to go around with a float with a, a, a like an activity display on it. And we're also going to be uh, talking to people in the community, uh, inviting them to um, the Christmas Unwrapped event that we've got online, uh, but also sharing some good news with them this Christmas time. Um, so I just want to encourage you to really get involved with that. There's a couple of things that we really need help with in its uh, distributing leaflets to the streets where we're going to be going with the float and the carols. Um, there's 2,000 leaflets to give out, so we can start doing that now because we've come out of lockdown. So um, if you're willing to, to get involved and deliver them, please contact uh, Church uh, or Dan and Mark. Um, and also we need people who are going to go around with the float and uh, and just uh, like steward and, and meet people and give out uh, information and invites, uh, particularly uh, to Church Unwrapped. So uh, if you were meaning to do that or if you've not thought about it, then please do think about it and consider it would be really great to have you on board with that. Um, and also just remember to invite people to the Christmas Unwrapped uh, that's going to be taking place on Sunday the 20th at 4pm online. Um, so that would be really great to have people along. Let's just um, pray uh, before Pastor Mark brings God's word to us now. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Um, I thank you for these uh, amazing events that we've got coming up over Christmas. I thank you for opportunity to witness in these difficult times. I thank you uh, that you have just spoken uh, uh, into the situation and um, and just encourage us to to get out there and just witness on the streets of Hesham, Lord. And I pray that um, you'll just help us to do that, Lord. And I pray that um, lives will be changed, Lord. I pray. I thank you for Christmas, and um, even though. Uh, for some people, Christmas is a difficult time. I pray that we'll be able to bring hope and light into Hesham uh, this Christmas time and uh, just point them to your amazing love, Lord. And um, yeah, I thank you for your word that you've got for us this morning. I thank you for the series we've been doing on being rooted in you. I pray um, that today um, you'll just really speak to us again, Lord, uh, and challenge us anew in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you join us again today. This morning, we're coming to the end of our message series called Rooted. We began this series with our theme verse. You may remember in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. And we looked at what it means to be rooted in Christ and to live a deep and fruitful life in him. Then we looked at what it means to be rooted in the church, rooted in faith, rooted in the word and rooted in hope. Today we come to another aspect of being rooted and you'll find it in Jude verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. You may remember that some weeks ago now, I spoke about the love of God and the fact that it is spoken of in Romans chapter 5 in two ways. First of all, when you ask the question, how can I know that God loves me? This is where you find the answer. Romans 5 verse 8, God shows his love. God demonstrates his love. God proves his love. How? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How can I know that God loves me? Christ died for me. This is how it is shown. This is how it is demonstrated. This is the proof of God's love. Christ did this and he did it for me. But there's more. Let me put it to you this way. The love of God is more than a truth to be re uh, believed. It is a gift to be enjoyed. That is where Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 comes in. Because here we're given a second statement about the love of God that goes alongside Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Notice what Paul says here. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. 
So do you see how these two verses complement each other so beautifully in giving us a full picture of the love of God? The love of God has been poured out in his son on the cross and the love of God is poured out by his spirit into our hearts. It is a truth to be believed and it is a gift to be enjoyed. You know, when I read that the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, my response is, I want as much of that as I can possibly get in my life on this side of heaven. And I'm sure that you would want the same thing too, to experience the affirming love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we come to know and truly feel that we are loved by God and that moves us beyond the realm of knowledge into the realm of experience. This morning I want us to ask the question, how can we stay rooted in God's love? How can I continue to experience this wonderful and affirming love of God as an ongoing experience in my own life. Jude says in verse 21 of his letter, keep yourselves in the love of God. The love of God towards us is free and changeable, unconditional, unmerited and unearned. Nothing will ever change that. But at the same time, if we're going to experience the love of God in our lives, we have a responsibility to keep ourselves experientially in the love of God. How are we going to do that? I want to suggest to you three simple ways that we can remain rooted in God's love. We'll spend most of our time on the first and then more briefly on the second two. The three ways are simply remember, obey and reflect. How are you going to keep yourself in the love of God? First of all, number one, remember. When you're tempted to doubt God's love for you, call to mind the unchangeable and indisputable and overwhelming evidence of God's love for you in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where you begin. It may be that you are facing overwhelming challenges in your life today. You wonder how you're going to face this coming week. You've said at the back of your mind, I don't know if God really cares about me at all. Begin by calling to your mind intentionally the overwhelming and indisputable evidence of God's love in Jesus Christ. God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, some of us desperately need to work this into our minds and into our hearts. We have been plagued with a way of thinking that we've grown up with and lived with for many years. A way of thinking that says, I will only be loved by God if I earn that love. Some of us think like that and we find it very difficult to get away from that. I want to speak directly to that this morning. Remember the love of God. Let me try and make it a little bit more personal by using an illustration. We're going to have two imaginary characters this morning. We will call them Bill and Ben. We'll have Bill now, we'll have Ben later. Bill is in high school, an imaginary character. Bill has been brought up in an evangelical church just like Hisham FM, where he's taught that God loves him. He believes this and he's put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bill is a perfectionist and he's rather shy and timid by nature. He has had throughout his high school years a string of straight A's in his school report. That's what he aims for all the time. And when he doesn't get it, he's pretty disappointed with himself. He's a sincere young man and he gen genuinely wants to please God. He has many fears though and he sometimes wonder wonders if God can really love him. When it comes to the communion service, he sits and he wonders whether he should really take the bread and cup 
because there are, after all, many things in Bill's life that are not really as they should be. His thought life is one of them. He really struggles with that one. And then last week when he was at school, there were some pupils who really got on his case and he just lost it. He, he let out that afternoon a string of foul language and he felt so ashamed. Christian doesn't believe like that, behave like that, Bill says to himself. In fact, sometimes Bill has wondered if he's really a Christian at all. Bill needs to remind himself of God's love by grasping God's unconditional love to him as he is. Bill, you do not earn the love of God with your straight A's. You do not earn the love of God by achieving victory over every temptation. Bill, God does not stop loving you when you fail. God loves you, Bill, with an everlasting and unchangeable love. Now, you may be older than Bill, but essentially, that is what you need to get into your mind because you struggle with the same thought pattern as he does. How are you going to get that into your mind? Here are three ways to remember. The first is the Lord's Supper. You see, at the very centre of Christian worship, God has given us an exercise to keep us rooted in the love of God. We come to a table where we receive bread and the cup that direct our attention if we follow God's signposts to a cross where the body of Jesus was broken for you and the blood of Jesus was shed for you. This is love, the Bible says. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and he has given us his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And God uses the Lord's Supper to tell you that he loves you. We uh, used to sing quite often when I was a young boy a hymn when we came to the Lord's table and I found it so helpful. Give me a sight, O Saviour, of your wondrous love for me, that love that brought you down to earth to die on Calvary. Oh, make me understand it. Help me to take it in. What it meant to you, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. Friends, we could spend the whole of our lives just seeking to gaze on the mystery of that revelation of the everlasting love of God for us. Can I ask you, are you coming to the Lord's table as often as you have the opportunity with open eyes and ears and a believing heart? The body of Jesus was broken for you. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. And in the Lord's Supper, the Lord invites us to take the bread and to take the cup. And he's saying to us, use this, feed on this. This is my love and it touches you. Take it, receive it. Some of you may be sitting at home this morning thinking, oh, I don't really know if God loves me. You may go through days of great darkness sorrow, confusion, pain. And right now you find it difficult to see where God's love is in all of this. God gives you bread and God gives you the cup. And he says, look at the cross and don't ever say that I don't love you. Secondly, the scriptures. A while back, a friend of mine, a pastor, was in India for a series of meetings and when he arrived in this particular town in South India there were posters all over the town that were advertising this campaign that was going to be held in a large stadium at which he would speak. The poster was supposed to say that he would bring the evening messages. Unfortunately there was a typo and the poster said that the visiting pastor from England would bring the evening massages. Fascinating thought. But you know, the work of the preacher is to massage the word of God into your heart, to
to massage it into your heart until it changes not only what you think but what you feel that's what a massage does doesn't it massage the word of god in its simplest form into your heart memorize and personalize scripture that speaks to you of the love of god personalize it the son of god loved me and gave himself for me in your meditation in your reflection massage that into your soul until it eventually changes not only the way that you think but also the way that you feel god demonstrates his love for me in this that while i was still a sinner christ died for me allow god to tell you that he loves you this is what god is saying to you in the scripture this is his revelation this is his love letter to you listen to what he says thirdly prayer for some of us we are so consumed either with our own pain or our own perfectionism that we do not hear the word of god we cannot receive the affirmation of god's love so when god says i love you you brush it off and you go on thinking exactly as you did before now that is why paul tells us that the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy spirit there is a distinct work of the holy spirit to convert the very feeling dimension of our hearts to a true faith in the god who loves us that is why he prays for this to be happening in the lives of believers he, he asked in ephesians 3 that god would give to believers <coughs> the power to grasp how long and high and wide and deep is the love of christ he says what i'm praying for is that you will have the inner strength the inner capacity to contain the knowledge of this love that up until now you've just been brushing off as if it was something of little significance that is a great way to pray isn't it oh god you know how little this container is able to hold the knowledge of your love how shriveled this dried up soul is lord i'm praying that you will open it up and expand my capacity to contain something of the breadth and the the depth and the length and the height of your love for me start praying like that and you will find that the love of god begins to touch the inner places of your life so that's the first thing remember now i did tell you that the first was the longest here is the second obey jesus spoke about this clearly in john 15 and verse 10 if you obey my commandments you will remain in my love it's pretty clear when you read that that jude had these words in his mind when he wrote in verse 21 under the inspiration of the holy spirit when he said keep yourselves in the love of god now we've had bill's story very briefly let's have ben's story ben is another high schooler he's been brought up in the same church as his friend bill he's also been taught that god loves him just like ben just like his friend bill he believes this and he's also put his faith in jesus christ and last week the pastor was in fine form and he preached a wonderful sermon on god's love there's nothing the pastor said that you can do that will make god love you more there's nothing you can do he said that will make you love uh, that will make god love you less this was a tremendous help to bill but it became a stumbling butt block to ben because on tuesday ben was in the shopping center with some friends they were looking through the racks of cds when ben saw one that he would like so he slipped it under his coat and then walked out of the shop with his friends later that night he was watching tv and he found what was called an adult film and he knew he shouldn't be watching it but he felt in the mood and so he watched it anyway ben of course knows that what he's doing was wrong but god loves him 
and God's love does not depend on anything Ben does. After all, that's what the pastor said. But Ben needs to hear this. Ben, God loves you and will always love you. But what you're doing right now will bring God's loving discipline on you as his child. It will cost you intimacy with God. You see, there is all the difference in the world between Bill and Ben. We can't always see it, but God surely does. If, Ben, you obey Jesus' commands, then you will remain in his love. That's the word of God to you. That does not mean, Ben, that you are earning the love of God by not stealing and by not watching particular films, but it does mean that disobedience to God forfeits your intimacy and fellowship with him. And frankly, Ben, all your attendance at the Lord's Supper and all the reading of uh, the Bible and all, uh, and all of the praying for a greater capacity to contain the love of God is not going to do you any good unless you're prepared to change what you're doing, which is disobedience to God's commands. This is not about losing your salvation, Ben, but it is about losing your intimacy and fellowship with God. You see, in the parable of the prodigal son, the father never stopped lo loving the prodigal son, but the son did not remain in his love. He went his own way and it was a disaster until he decided to return to the father and to submit himself wholly to what the father was calling him to do. You see, the sun never stops shining, but on a day when there are clouds, we do not feel the warmth of the sun, just as the prodigal did not experience the love of the father who was waiting for him to return. When Jude says, keep yourself in the love of God, he's reminding us of something absolutely fundamental to healthy relationships. If you want to cultivate a close relationship with someone, don't do what annoys them. It's very simple. If your wife does not like you getting up at midnight to practice the trumpet, don't do it. She may not stop loving you because you play the trumpet at midnight, but because it annoys her, she may very well take a high-heeled shoe and throw it in your direction. If you want to remain in the love of God, don't do those things that displease him. If you do, it's not that he will stop loving you, but there will be conflict in your relationship until you are fully reconciled with him. When we are disobedient, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit is grieved, he is silent. And he does not speak the love of God into your heart. Some of us are spending a great deal of time under the clouds. And we wonder why communion, the Bible and prayer don't do us any good. And the answer is simply, there is disobedience going on. It has to stop. And we won't know real intimacy with God again until it does. Thirdly, and most briefly of all, reflect. Here is something for Bill and Ben and everyone else. The experience of the love of God is about giving as well as receiving. God's love is a love that is both given and received. Even before creation in the midst of the Trinity, among the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There was the giving and receiving of love, an eternal, wonderful, glorious mystery. Now, keeping myself, yourself, in the love of God means more than receiving it. It means reflecting its very nature, and that involves giving it. And that's what John makes clear in his letter when he says, if we love one another, then God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. If we love one another. God's love does its work in you when it brings you to that place where you're truly able to love another person with the same love that he has given to you. We hear it from the very words of Jesus. I am the vine and you are the branches. 
Just think of that incredible picture. Uh, remain in me and I will remain in you and you will bear much fruit. A Christian is a person who is in Christ. The life of God, the love of God, the, the spirit of God flows into the life of a Christian believer. It's not just that you believe in him. It's that you are in him and he is in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And just as the life of the tree flows into its branches, the life of God and the love of God flows into every member of the body of Christ. And some of you may be in a difficult relationship. Some of you may go to work tomorrow in a, a cold and hard place. Keep yourself in the love of God. And as that love flows into you, you will have something to give that is a reflection of the love with which you have been loved. It's not a case of me saying, ah, oh, I've got to go and love these di difficult people. It is that the life and the love of God flows into the believer. Keeping yourself in the love of God means that you will have compassion even towards some cold and heartless people around you. Keeping yourself in the love of God means that you will find the ability to forgive that most difficult offence. Keeping yourself in the love of God means that others will see the lo love of God in you. So remember, remember the overwhelming evidence of God's love for you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Obey, obey his commands and don't do those things that displease him. And reflect, reflect the love of God to those around you, even those who you find difficult to love in your own strength. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your amazing and fathomable love that has been poured out for us at the cross and poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We know that it's one thing to talk about these things. It's another thing to live in the reality of them. And so, Lord, we pray that you will pour out upon us a renewed sense of your affirming love. We want to taste and experience more of the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of your amazing love so that out of that love we will be able to love others even those who are hard and cold Lord there are homes and schools and workplaces all around our community that desperately need to be touched by your love so help us to keep ourselves in that love so that we might reflect it to others. To that end we pray that we may be well rooted in your love as we remember, as we obey and as we reflect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.
Well, that has been great to be with you again this morning. Thank you so much for joining us and being together. Um, just a, a quick uh, highlight that next week we're going to be having communion um, on Church Online. So if you uh, need to prepare yourself with some bread and, and juice, then please get that together for next week. Um, but yeah, thanks again for being online. Thanks for being uh, for sharing and commenting and connecting with us. And um, I just want to encourage you that you, if you if you have been spoken to today, please please um, contact Church Mark uh, or Dan and just um, maybe encourage them about how how God's been speaking to you through this series. Or uh, also, if you would like some prayer, we would love to come alongside you and pray with you. Uh, or if you've got any needs, you know, we are here for you as a church and we want you to know that we are here for you. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pray as we close and then uh, and then uh, we're going to see you again next week, hopefully. Lord Jesus, I thank you uh, for your presence with us this morning, Lord. I thank you for your word and how you've spoken to us, Lord. And uh, I just pray that um, you'll be with us as we enter another week, Lord. I pray that... Um, each day will be a God day, God. I pray not just Sunday, Lord. I pray that every day we will let you speak into our lives, into our situations. And every day will be a day of worship to you, Lord, uh, as we leave this place. So be with each of us. Keep us safe, Lord. Protect us as a church. In Jesus' name. Amen.